Sales Babble is sponsored by Vidyard, a video solution for sales professionals. Pat. So what I've done now, it's the half year. And so at the mid-year point, are we optimistic or pessimistic about whether we're going to achieve our goals? Well, here's my five R's to get you optimistic. So here's some five simple things that you can do that even if you're still not, if you're still a little concerned, you can flick the switch, change the dial. And they are one, uh, review your pipeline. Two, re-engage your contacts. Three, research your targets. Four, refine your scripts, so your engagement scripts. Uh, and five, request referrals. Now that it's just turned mid-year, how are you feeling about your pipeline? Is it half full or instead half empty? Our guest Joe McAuliffe walks us through the five R's for a comprehensive mid-year pipeline review, ways to qualify prospects using his idea process, and how he uses the triple C's to update a sales script. Hey, it's time for you to focus on the real deals. <laughs> Welcome to Sales Babble, the podcast that shares selling secrets for non-sellers. And now your host, Pat Helmers. Welcome, Joe. You ready to babble? I'm ready to babble, my friend. Always ready. It's been quite a while since you and I met. Last We last personally were in person, mate, I should say. Uh, 2016. Correct. Five years ago, we first met, I think, down in 1871, right, at the, at the uh, tech incubator hub. Correct. And Working with bunk, with the Bunker Lab, right? With Working bunk, with, with uh, veterans. With, bunk, with Bunker Lab and yeah. my friends at Bunker Lab yeah. um, who are still doing well. Very and, well. And, um, and you, were do, you were talking about pitch decks and raising money and stuff like that. Super interesting stuff. So I'm on your email list, and you just had a really interesting and a timely article just came out uh, about a week ago, and it was titled, Is Your Year Half Empty or Half Full? What's this about? Yeah, I, it's yeah, obviously it's a play on the old, is you know, there's a glass half empty, glass half full. Um, but this is a great time of year for us to be reflecting upon the probability of achieving our goals for the year, our annual sales targets or our annual goals. And and it's 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 not only are we thinking, are we halfway there, but also what's our mindset like? Are we optimistic or are we pessimistic? And especially considering the year we once had, I know there's been a lot of talk about 2020. Or oh, hasn't there? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so, so, the, so the thing is, is 2021 more of the same or not? And really, it's it's a it's a it's a year of immense opportunity. You know, in the midst of chaos, there is always opportunity, as uh, Sun Tzu said in the Art of War. So I love using that quote. But um, I I wrote this article a little while ago, probably four years ago, and I publish it every year, and I get a great response. Really? Oh, so this is this is you're you're recycling here, which is which which by the way is a good tip for all content marketers. Brilliant. Yeah, correct, mate. But update it. Recycle and update. And don't be afraid to say you're recycling. You know, I, I do that sometimes. But the reason why I say, as I just said to you, it's a popular article. It's a po- I have many, I get a lot of feedback on this particular newsletter, like I got from you, Pat, which is lovely, um, saying, love the article, thank you. We needed this. Shared it at my team meeting. So, yes, we're going to get into it. I, I give a few tips on things to be thinking about this year to, you know, re-energize, you know, your, uh, your, your target, your efforts for this year, your, your goal achievement targets, but also just to reflect upon mindset. You know, it's, it's, you know, are people feeling like, oh, I'm glad the year is halfway done. Geez, you know, another half to go. Or they go, hey, it's half done and we've still got another half to go and I'm pumped. I'm super excited. I love it. I love it. Now, there's five R's in this article. Why don't we walk through them? Yeah. So um, as a coach, I've become a big fan of using simple tools to help people remember things, using simple tools for discussion purposes, like best practices discussions. And I remember when we talked about pitching, um, I shared, you know, one of my wish acronym back then. On, I remember. You know, on your, yep, on your elevator pitch. And by the way, folks, I'll make sure and stick that in the uh, in the show Thank notes. Thank you. <laughs> wish, <Yeah>. W-I-S-H. <laughs> yeah, W-I-S-H. And I, I hope you do because, again, it's another one of these 
popular acronyms, and a lot of people have gone, especially you know, new new salespeople. Um, but especially as we're networking again, thank God we're networking. And I know some people are a little slower to move than others, and understandably so. Um, however, as we're networking again, rethink the way you introduce yourself. You know, stop with the name, rank, and serial number. And yes, if you can add that link, the WISH acronym has been very popular with my clients over the years. So, um, so again, thanks for that, Pat. So what I've done now, it's the half year. And so at the mid-year point, are we optimistic or pessimistic about whether we're going to achieve our goals? Well, here's my five R's to get you optimistic. So here's some five simple things that you can do that even if you're still not, if you're still a little concerned, you can flick the switch, change the dial. And they are one, uh, review your pipeline. Two, re-engage your contacts. Three, research your targets. Four, refine your scripts, so your engagement scripts. Uh, And five, request referrals. Five very simple R's, which are just great discussion points at any team meeting, a discussion with your leader, or for personal reflection at this point of the year. Okay, why don't we go into each of these a little bit more in depth, okay? Start with review your pipeline, number one. Yes, yeah, so we all have these pipelines that uh, have a lot of, let's say, junk in them. And what I mean by that is we've got a whole bunch of people that we've called, message, we've had one conversation with, maybe we've issued a proposal, we followed up or we didn't follow up, all that type of stuff. So our pipeline is full of stuff. Now, at this point of the, t- of the year, it's a great time to go back and cull your pipeline. Hang on a minute, because what we're going to do is we're going to spend a lot of time on these easy targets, people who I've engaged with, people who I've had a sniff of interest from. This is fantastic. And I'm going to keep working on them and keep working them. And then they're going to ghost to me or they won't return my call. But you're, you're putting a lot of effort into them. And so I always say, take your time right now to review it and review it seriously and cull it. And here's a little tool I use, and I learned this from my sales coach. Yes, folks, I encourage everybody to have a coach. My coach, Dean Mannix, he said, Joe, if you don't have a good idea that they're going to become a client or they're going to do more with you, then stop, right? Because it means you're limiting yourself from speaking to other new prospects or targets. Right. And so here's his idea. This, This is what I love about the idea model. Apologies, folks, another acronym idea. Does that contact in your pipeline have an intention to buy? Do they have a genuine intention to buy? Is this someone that you've just reached out to and you've had a conversation with but then you've just thrown them into your pipeline or do they have a genuine intention to buy? D, and and there's lots of ways you can discover that, right? D, the classic decision-making process. Do you know their decision-making process? Do you know who the decision-makers are? Have you even asked? Something I've learned now in all my sales meetings over the last few years is definitely to ask what their decision-making process is. How can I help you make a decision? So if you don't know that and you don't know who you, if you're not speaking to the right people, then should they still be in your pipeline or make an effort to find out now before you cull them, right? Um, E E is next. Yes. (laughs) Expectations in the ID model, expectations. Do you understand their expectations of you? Do, you, do, do they understand your expectations no, no, no matter what industry you're in, right? So um, I speak to a lot of bankers and has that deal gone cold because you're still waiting for some information from them? Well, do they know? And are you meeting their expectations? What, if they were choosing to move with you, for you to become their new strategic partner, for you to provide that product or solution, are you clear about what they're expecting and are you, have you delivered on that? And the last one is the A. And for me, this is where, you know, that ghosting has become a big term in sales. It's access. Access. Are you getting access to their time? You know if someone's giving you their time, willing to meet, then absolutely. It's a a great, uh, they should be in your pipeline. Are they giving access to the information you need? And are you getting access to the people? So if you're speaking to a CFO, but you know that ultimately the decision maker is the CEO and he or she is just too busy to meet you. You need to start questioning, 
should they still be my pipeline? Do I need to keep spending a lot of time on this prospect? So for me, review your pipeline is critical because it will either free up your time or it'll help you focus in on what needs to be done to convert that pipeline now. I love it. Good time to do an audit. Yes. July. (laughs) Spot on, spot on. If not soon, but spot on. Okay, number two is to re-engage your contacts. Is that right? Yeah, re-engage your contacts. And frankly, this is your existing contacts. So your existing, sure, your existing clients, your existing strategic partners, referral partners, centers of influence. Hey, there's, you know, there's always a good time to re-engage with a contact because as you know, more meetings equals more business. So if you're struggling to come up with meetings and I'm trying to meet more prospects, use this time of year to go, hang on, I'm going to re-engage with my existing contacts, people who already know me, people who I've worked with in the past, centers of influence as uh, another term that's used often, strategic partners. So we talk about the Bunker Lab. If I was in Chicago, I'd re-engage with the Bunker Lab again because we're all in the same boat. It's the middle of the year. So how is their year going? Um, what are, are they on track to hit their goals? What can you do to help them? So there could be more opportunities with your existing contacts, or this is just a great time to potentially get a referral. We're going to get back to that. We're going to talk about that one later. But, you know, if, if you're struggling to get meetings, and I know a lot of my clients say to me, we need to meet more prospects. We need more prospects. I go, okay, just start with your existing contacts first. This is a great time because they're not so much that it's easy, but it's summer. It's a good time to talk about what they're doing on summer vacation, talk about their year, all that type of stuff. And you will find just by re-engaging your existing contacts that A, it'll help boost your positivity because they're going to be positive about their year or maybe they're not and you're going to uncover an opportunity to help them, right? So that'll lift, that'll boost your positivity as well. Absolutely. I've always found the more conversation you have, the more likely they'll buy Oh, absolutely. And then you're right. Because you why? Because you're uncovering more stuff about them. Right. right? More goals, personal right. goals, family goals, business contacts goals, whatever it may be. Their staff's goals. Oh my gosh. If you're in a business, if any service provider right now, you should be talking to your clients about their staff. And is there something you can do to help them engage their staff? Right. There's another way of adding value to any of your clients. And if your client is a it's if it's B2B business, um, and they have staff, you know, a lot of businesses right now are looking for ways to re-engage. So that's why I always say this is a great opportunity to re-engage with your contacts. I totally agree. Sales Babble is sponsored by Vidyard. Vidyard is an easy-to-use yet powerful video solution that makes it simple to create videos, host them ad-free, share them with others, and track their performance. Whether you're recording a video for one person or sharing it with the world on your website, it's easy to manage your video content. Vidyard Solution is built for business with robust analytics, integrations with top enterprise tools, and customization options that answer businesses' unique needs. But you may be asking yourself, what's this got to do with sales? Well, with Vidyard, you can differentiate your emails by putting a face to a name when prospecting, following up, and demos. You can use the same CRM and outreach tools that you use every day to build content the entire sales team can leverage and track analytics to know which videos convert best. Sign up for a free Vidyard account today by going to vidyard.com slash babble and as a bonus, get their high conversion virtual sales playbook. Again, Go to vidyard.com slash babble. That's B A B B L E. Next one is um, number three is researcher targets. Yeah, so um, salespeople uh, and sales organizers, whether it's bankers or um, service provider, whatever it may be, if you're a salesperson, um, you have a target list. You should have anyway. You have a target list, right? You know who your products and solutions are ideally suited for. And so you have a target list. So, Pat, as you know, now I've evolved my business and based on my banking background, I target banks. Now, how exhaustive is your target list? So as I said before, we've talked about reviewing your pipeline. So these are existing prospects that you've been meeting with. Now go to your target list and go, have I spoken to everyone on my target list? 
Are there enough names on my target list? Is it an opportunity for me to think about another geographic area or maybe another industry? So the most important thing right now is to um, think about uh, who's on that list. Do a little bit more research. That's the other thing. You'll find that, hey, your targets have been doing things. And so you may have had, you know, had you may not have had success in getting a meeting, but as you research what they've been up to in the first half of the year or since the last time you con- you contacted them, they may have won an award. Uh, they may have purchased another business. There's so many different things. So I always say research your targets and make sure you've got a solid target list for the second half of the year. What's a great way to research? Is there is there any any tools specifically that you recommend? Yeah, so it, it comes so it comes down to what industries you're targeting. And again, I'm probably focusing more on you know B two B, but even even customers. So it comes down to um, there's so many service providers out there, tools out there, even the internet, right? That'll help you research your target list. So for example, for me, um, the banking industry, there are great platforms like iBankNet.com. And you go on there and I'll tell you about different size of banks and different regions and whatnot. So that's a starting point. So wherever you can get statistical data, grab that data. Now, if you're targeting specific businesses in a region, you can go to local chambers of commerce. You're gonna, you can do all that type of stuff. And then you dig deeper. So that research, it's a great question. Take that research to that minute level. Like then look at those specific targets. No, so for me, the ticket price on any new client, coaching client, can be quite significant. So therefore, I want to get down and really make sure I understand something about them because that'll feed into my next R in a moment. But yeah, the more research you do, so you can start with some data analysis. There's plenty of resources out there for you. Um, and then you just break it down into you know, specific regions and you know, specific targets themselves and then just look them up know on the internet there's so much available resources and um, that it is important that not only do you know about them specifically but you also know about that industry you're targeting right don't just come up with you know just pick an industry out of the air and go okay i'm going to start targeting technology businesses today because you're going to come undone very very quickly right so do your research on the industry and there needs to be some kind of a link so for anybody out there that's targeting a specific niche I, I hope that you've got some experience at that, in that niche or connections with people with that experience. That is how you will um, be able to improve your research. Differentiate yourself. Correct. Right. Because you understand their industry, you understand their business, and you'll understand whether or not they're, they're qualified to actually to buy your stuff. Yep. Um, Correct. Yeah. And, by doing and Pat, your since the last time we spoke, like I was very much a general sales coach working with lots of small businesses, mm-hmm. loved working with the Bunker Lab with startup businesses. And then I got to a point where I realized, hang on, I need to focus my targets. And I remember us talking about this, actually. You started to niche. That was, that was smart. Yeah. And, and uh, it's been fantastic. I mean, the business has absolutely exploded. I'm super excited um, because I leveraged what I knew. I knew banking and I had lots of success in banking. So I've been able to share that success. So yes, while I was able to share my sales success broadly, and as I'm doing with you today, I was able to get very focused and very specific. And you're right, add significant value then to my targets. Mm-hmm. And, but it doesn't stop me from still researching them researching you know the the west coast the east coast the midwest banks um banks over a billion under a billion like they've all got different challenges and there's plenty of information and that's the other thing with researching making sure like as i said before you're connecting with people with experience but use linkedin i've connected with so many people on linkedin um you know this podcast is a great resource you know there's lots of great information here for any coach that's out there you know, there's lots of great, or any salesperson out there. So, you know, um, the research is a really important part and we don't spend enough time doing it. You know, research your target market, even if you have to do it two or three times a year, but, you know, taking that time to do it will certainly set you up for a very successful year. Cool. Cool beans. So <laughs> what's the next one here? Number four, refine your scripts. Yeah. So prospecting, don't you all love it? right? Prospecting. Now, when it comes to, now, when we use the word prospecting, for me, that also applies to existing clients. Now, I I mentioned before, re-engage your contacts. I talked about researching your targets. Well, now that you've got all this information, you've got that knowledge now to refine your prospecting scripts. 
Now, regardless of whether you cold call, cold email, send out a LinkedIn message, um, send out a handwritten letter, use Vidyard, as we mentioned earlier, so do a video Mm -hmm. message. It's important that you now take the time to refine your scripts because a lot's happened in the last six months. So if you've been using the same scripts for six months, time out. Are there some new issues, new things impacting your contacts, impacting your prospects in your pipeline, impacting your targets? And so um, another you know, a little tool or device I use to help people with their scripts, because remember, when you're putting a script together, please, folks, it's not about you. It's about them, right? So that's why I like the wish statement. It's all about them. So I use what I call the triple C. I use the triple C. And the triple C is this. What concerns do your targets have about providers like you? So when I'm speaking to bankers, when you're, if they're outreaching to prospects, small business owners, what concerns do small business owners have about banks, right? You should be aware of that. So you can engage them. Secondly, the second C to help you with your script, because remember, it's got to be about them and not you, are crimes. What crimes are your targets committing? Now, I'm not talking about illegal activity, right? I'm talking about what inefficiencies in their operations. Have they not, such as what we're doing today, have they not reviewed their strategy at the mid-year? Are they falling way behind their goals and they haven't thought about new ways to re-engage, right? So what crimes are they committing that your business can help them with, right? And so therefore you want to build that into your script that you know about these inefficiencies, these challenges. And finally, the last C is what crisis, what external crisis is impacting your target market? Well, we know the pandemic, right? So there's a lot of things. So, you know, it's, uh, hey, what's happening with interest rates? What's happening with taxes? We all know they're about to go up, right? So therefore, does your business provide advice, solutions to help them with external crises, internal crimes, or just concerns in general they have? And that's what I do. I use that 3C or that triple C framework to help me script my prospecting script, my prospecting cadence, whether it's an email or a cold call, whatever, and let them know that, hey, I know. I know this is your problem and I'd like to share some strategies to help you resolve them. So refine your scripts. This is the time of year to really make sure you get, you're, you're more polish current them. with those, those issues. Good time to polish them. When, which brings us to our last one. Our la- number five is request yeah. referrals. Yeah. And you, you briefly brought this up a second ago. Yeah, you're right. And the number one way to grow your business is still referrals. You ask, you know, any salesperson, any sales leader, yeah, any people salesperson. are often uncomfortable with this. Oh, it's it it is. It's crazy, and I hear it all the time. Um, whenever I'm coaching, you know, a, a team of people, you know, hand up if you're regularly asking for referrals, and few hands go up. You know, and um, and so the, the key here is that if you're reengaging your contacts. I'm pretty sure you've done something pretty fabulous for them in the last half year, if not the last 18 months, especially considering last year. Now, they have contacts that need your help. Those contacts of yours are looking for ways to strengthen their relationships with their own network. So wouldn't it be great for them to refer this fabulous sales service provider or professional or someone with this amazing product that can help their contacts, you're, you're going to help them strengthen their relationships. So of course, you're going to ask for a referral. And so um, I strongly encourage this time of year when you're re-engaging your contacts that you ask for a referral. And it's, it's easy to do so, especially with people where you know you've provided tremendous value. Remind them of the value that, that you've um, provided. Um, talk about how they're benefiting from that. And then all you need to ask is, who else do you know that is having the same challenges and who could benefit? It's not hard. People want to do this too because oh. people want to show off how smart they are. I hired Joe and boy, was that brilliant. You should too. I, I, Pat, spot, I couldn't agree more. That's, that's why it, it's a nice way to end the discussion or the, it's a nice fifth R for this discussion about optimism because that's what it's about. Is your year mm-hmm. half empty or is it half full? And so you're coming full circle because the real test of your mindset of your optimism is when it comes to referrals. Because frankly, it's one of the easiest things you can do. Now, yes, 
there's smarter, cleverer, better ways to ask for a referral than, hey, if you know somebody, just, you know, or, hey, um, I'm hoping you could uh, send a referral my way. Yes. I don't know. We, we, That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can sharpen it. We can sharpen it. But the true test is of your optimism, of that, of that positivity, is your willingness and ability to ask for referrals, truly. And mm-hmm. uh, I work with... Lots of us, the, the Bunker Lab, uh, because that's our connection, um, opened up so many doors for me. And a lot of those people in those the Bunker Lab knew people at other associations. And frankly, Pat, someone knew somebody at the Illinois Bankers Association. And I asked, who else do you know? And I got into the Illinois, and I've been working with the Illinois Bankers Association now for the last five years. And it's, it's, I've, as a result of that, I've, gained, I've been doing public speaking for them at all their conferences. I've met. So it all started because I felt that I had confidently added value to a lot of those people that attended the Bunker Lab, these veterans starting up their own businesses, looking for sales tips and advice to raise capital and sell their products. And they enjoyed it. They benefited from it. And so, of course, I was going to ask them for a referral. And yeah. that's how my business exploded. Yeah, that's why I often look at people. I don't necessarily assume they're going to be a client of mine, but I always make an assumption that they might know somebody who might be a prospective client. Yeah. So, so in this case here, you knew a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy. And that of course, all worked out. of course, of course. You know, there's a lot of banks who, um, or salespeople who sometimes may think a, a prospect is too small for them. I hear that all the time, right? Oh, that really fit my niche. There is still some way you can add value. There's still some way you can leave an impression. And, and they may happen to know that next huge client that you can pick up. So therefore, um, it's all about building relationships, being authentic. And, uh, and then this time of year, this is a great time of year for all of us to just, you know, it's the summer months, we're out there, you know, enjoying the summer, uh, especially here in, you know, in, in North America and Australia, it's, it's winter mm-hmm. right now. And mm-hmm. uh, what a great time to just reflect on your probability of achieving your goals and to get optimistic about it. And these five R's are just five simple tips on well, five simple ways that you can do that. Now, if people wanted to connect with you, Joe, what's the best way of doing that? So please uh, feel free to send me a, a, an invitation to connect on LinkedIn. So Joe Mikalev uh, on LinkedIn. Um, and also visit my website, uh, www.growupsales, growupsales.com. Uh, and the great thing about both of those areas is that I post regularly, and uh, and so there's lots of information and resources like Pat does um, to help you improve your career and grow your business and and achieve your sales goals. I highly recommend people to get on this uh, email list that I'm on. Um, you also replicate it in your LinkedIn post too. So Correct. You, you fill up, and I I love that. I love that. Love to love that. Joe, thanks for babbling here on Sales Babble. I really Pat, I really it's always it. a pleasure. It's great to reconnect, mate, and let's uh, let's keep in touch. As I mentioned, this is the second time that Joe's been on the podcast. And if you go to the show notes at www.salesbabble.com, you can find that episode 122 titled How to Pitch a Startup and Get Funded. And you can also find links to our sponsor, Vidyard, video solutions for sales professionals. Next week, Oscar Chavez will be on our podcast, and he's going to give advice on how to find hard-to-connect people. Owners of companies, executives, those kinds of people who are super busy and it's very difficult to get them on the phone or have them read your email or connect with them on LinkedIn. He's got some terrific advice on how to get to the most important person, the decision maker. Before we finish this up, I wonder if you could do me a favor. If you could please share this episode with a friend or someone who you think might find value in this episode, whatever app you're using right now, There is a share button that will send a text or a message or an email or a social media post. It'd mean all the world to me if you personally, if you could do me a favor and forward this podcast to just one person who has the same curiosity about selling that you do. Think about it for a second. Who would that be? Yeah, that person. Do it right now. Be a good friend and share what you've learned. Until next Tuesday, take care and have a highly successful and a profitable selling day.
Thank you for listening to the Sales Babble Podcast. Find us at www.salesbabble.com. This is a production of Abenero Media.